It's July 19th, 2014, or at least it was July 19th, 2014, when we were all hanging out at Red Cap Games and Hobbies in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for the Netrunner Regional Championship Tournament. This is the game 21 of the elimination rounds. On the right, Ben, the ninth seed, playing Andromeda. On the left, Seth, the 12th seed, playing Tenon Institute. While they're shuffling the cards here, I just want to remind everyone that um, I do other things besides making these Netrunner videos. I have a podcast called Geek Nights. Uh, we do a lot of guest speaking appearances at various conventions, such as PAX and others. Uh, we make a lot of YouTube videos. So I'm going to put some links to my other stuff in the description for you to check out if you care. All right, so the Andromeda here is a pretty typical Andromeda. By the way, amazing uh, top 16 world championships, Crips' playmat. You don't see those too often. I guess there's only 16 of them <laughs> in the world. <laughs> um, the Tenon Institute, extremely interesting deck. He's going for pure trick of light fast advance. And he just gets money. He defends the centrals to lock you out completely. Uh, when you're locked out, you can't get the successful run. There's only three places to run. Right? Are you going to waste a run on archives through some ice just to prevent him from getting his advancement token? Right? So he makes sure that you can't get a successful run, takes his advancement counter, uh, builds up to Trick of Light, scores a 3 for 2, and he does that three times. Three Tricks of Light, three scores, and then he'll score a Clone Retirement uh, for the seventh point, and that's pretty much how this deck works. Uh, what I found interesting is that the only way he has to recurse the Trick of Light, if he needs more of them, is with Howard, and he's planning to hold out. Um, you know, so we'll see how that works out for him. Also, I'd like to point out he's got all all his stuff, his click counters <laughs> on the bottom there, and his he's got a dice tower up top. Uh, he, all his pieces are skull themed. Uh, pretty cool. I like I like someone who has a theme to all their bits here. Uh, Andromeda using dice for credits. Uh, the ones that are actually credits are. You know, just keeping them in the in his top left corner there. All right, Tenon does not like the draw, and goes for the mulligan. Andromeda also going for the mulligan. We saw some of that Andromeda hand. Um, but I don't, I don't remember. I remember seeing a parasite in there. I don't remember if I saw the desperado data sucker that you want to see. And that's going to be, you know, it's it's sort of the key here, right? Um, you know, the Andromeda deck is powered, gets boosted by successful runs, and the Tenon deck is boosted by no successful runs. So, if it starts going a lot of turns where Andromeda can't get a successful run. Not only is Tenon getting boosted, but Andromeda is getting weaker because all her economy is, is based on getting successful runs. No data sucker tokens, no Desperado credits. And the Tenon Institute's economy is based on that, right? So it's, it's going to be very swingy. Uh, whoever get you know, if the successful runs happen, it's going to be big boost for Andromeda. If the successful runs don't happen, big boost for Tenon. Okay, so Dirty Laundry Archives, that's your successful run for the turn. Straight away. Fairy, that should take care of uh, at least a one shot of some nasty Jinteki ice. Clone chip, so two fairies. <laughs> Katie. Ah, uh, Howard. Yeah, I think Tenon here got agenda flooded, uh, and Howard is going to save him. 
you know, a lot of people are like, oh, Howard, uh, it's so strong. Uh, but basically, <laughs> you know, he allows you to get out of this situation, right? What This game would have been super boring and lame and, you know, even worse if a tenant had to play the agenda flooded hand. Boop. Instead, now, Howard, you know, turns this game that would have been a, you know, it's an important game. This is game 21. We're getting close to the end. Uh, Howard turns it from, you know, a silly game of, oh, I drew four agendas so you win, into, uh, you know, a real game. Howard makes it a real game. He's running R&D. Ice Wall, of course, Ice Wall. Uh, he ran archives, though, and the Howard was popped. That was still a successful run, so no tenon happening. But look, Andromeda doesn't have the Desperado data sucker. So agenda flood on one side, uh, Andromeda missing her favorite cards on the other side. Subliminal messaging. Oh, here comes the money. See, he only has to defend the three centrals because he's only going to fast advance. And he's not using Sand Sand. He's using Trick of Light. So, um, you know, it just takes money to res ice big enough to stop Andromeda. Bl blocking up the HQ to prevent the account siphon here. Because you're going to need big ice uh, to stop whatever's coming. Special order for the Corroder. Here we go, R&D. It's not looking good for you, R&D. Looked like a Grim, maybe? I couldn't tell. But yeah, the subliminal messaging is a really interesting play. Because um, basically, when the runner doesn't make the successful run, you get the subliminal messagings and you get your Tenon ability. So... Again, you're so, it's sort of an all-or-nothing situation, right? If you can stop the successful run from happening, you get all these bonuses. If you don't stop it from happening, then you don't get anything. I wonder if it might be, you know, it's, like, it's a real question of deck design there, right? Do you maybe play a card where, you know, this card works, you know, if they maybe make a deck with, I don't know, like I, I can't think of a card that would do this actually, but like if they get the success, right? Oh, so there's the new that didn't exist at this time, right? There's the new Wayland card where you get a credit when they make a successful run, right? So you could play that in Tenant Institute. That way, okay, if they don't get a successful run, I get my ten encounter. If they do get successful runs, I get my current Wayland uh, card. I get some credits. So you're getting something no matter what. Right, do you play it that way, or do you play all or nothing? So we see a celebrity gift, and we see some agendas there. Uh, two brain trusts, but I guess Andromeda can't go for HQ with those two ice there, uh, especially not after celebrity gift money has, uh, has cashed in. A fairy and a corroder might do it, but one code gate uh, will be the end. The ice wall isn't stopping the corroder, but if he... Oh, celebrity gifting again. So yeah, brain trust, restructure. I think that is a grim. And is that another celebrity gift in there? So is that all three celebrity gifts? That's huge money. Huge money. Yeah, the grim is not so great because you res it. It won't trash a program because there's a ferry out. There's a clone ship out. Uh, if it is, I don't know, was it a Grim? I think it was. Um, and you're just going to give the runner a bad pub, which is, is not going to help you in this situation. You know, suddenly the Corroder's hitting R&D for zero. Instead of one. As soon as you advance that ice wall, though, the Corroder's going to have to start paying. It's going to have to start paying. I'm surprised if there was a parasite in hand. I think is there. Uh, I guess yeah, there is a parasite in in the hand. 
Why not Parasite the Ice Wall? Um, I mean, you see his Tenant Institute. The Ice Wall is the only thing he really has to advance. I mean, sure, it's only costing you one to break. Um, but if you just get it off the board, what's he going to advance? <laughs> and you could save a lot of money with the Corroder. You can clone ship the Parasite if you have to. See? Here's a good example, right? So Inazuma, Koma Inu, huge, huge explosion. Lost his whole hand, including that parasite. <laughs> Runs eight, well, he gets into HQ, sees the celebrity gift. <laughs> this, is a, this is a joke because it has Lucas' signature on it, see? Uh, so every, you know, when he hits it, he's like, Lucas! <laughs> sort of a running j joke that happens during this game. Um, if he had parasited the ice wall earlier, it would have gone down. And then on this run, he would have been able to clone ship the parasite onto uh, that um, Koma Inu and not lost his hand. All right, so now he is going to clone ship parasite the Koma Inu anyway. <laughs> but you know, he lost his hand. Well, at least the Inazuma is now also worthless. Because so because two he checked the uh, two inside jobs went down the hole uh, from the Koma Inu hit, so he immediately followed it up with the ice something remote, betting the corp couldn't get in there. Oh, it's a Howard. I I don't know. I, would you have put a brain trust there? I might have put a brain trust there. Or maybe you couldn't because each you know, because you saw the clone ship parasite. You have to. The Komainu is going down. So because the Count Siphon might show up, you have to. You can't spend that turn scoring the brain trust. You have to to block HQ instead. Uh, only a code gate is going to stop Andromeda right now. Or two sentries that need to be broken. So if it came out with like a roto turret. Or uh, another Koma Inu or something. And then again. Because the clone ship is gone. And Andromeda can't have too many clone ships, right? No, oh, there's the trick of light. At R&D. It's coming. Does not have the advancement counters, though. I don't think there's been a single turn without the successful run yet. He's going for HQ. He's letting him in. Lucas! <laughs> there it is again. Uh, I do want to point one thing I realized watching this game. Uh, so he has the, the celebrity gift signed by Lucas there. Let's say he had two celebrity gifts in hand. In this case, he can't because we know that two are in the archives. But let's say he had two in hand. The runner, under normal circumstances, the runner could run, see a celebrity gift, run, see a celebrity gift, run, see a celebrity gift. And, you know, you wouldn't know, am I just really unlucky? I keep hitting the same card, or are there multiple celebrity gifts in hand? Well, if one of them has an autograph on it, then you know, you'll know for sure, for absolute certain as a runner, that there is more than one celebrity gift if you access one with the signature and one without. I don't think this means you shouldn't be allowed to play with signed cards because you're just helping the other player. <laughs> you're not helping yourself in any way by marking the front of the card. Uh, you're just helping out the other player. And if you want to do that, uh, go for it. Um, I don't know how much of a difference that information would even make uh, in the game. Maybe if your hand is only two cards, then the runner might save a click or two and stop running if they you know, truly believe. You know, they might have kept running if they believed that they were unlucky and kept seeing the same one out of two card every time. I like this move. Uh, he uses the Jackson to get ice back. Right, ice that can probably end the run 
and do nasty stuff uh, against the fairy. And he gets a sentry and no code gate breakers out and probably suspecting that the runner plays Yag. Uh, the Inazuma is also strong. Oh look, Koma Inu is right on top of the deck. Oof. He's definitely got the money. Oh, inside job. See? Brain tr yeah, he was. There he goes. He tried for the brain trust, betting that seeing two inside jobs in the trash, that the runner did not have a third, even in the deck, which people, you know, a lot of people only run two these days, or that he wouldn't draw it or have it. But he did have it. He just drew it, in fact. I wouldn't make that bet for two reasons. Uh, number one is planned assault. Not that people are running planned assault that much, but if he, you know, he. That's a lot more. Co it's basically another copy of Inside Job, assuming he has a third Inside Job in the deck. But even more than planned assault, same old thing, right? A hundred percent, ninety-nine percent chance this deck is running same old thing. He could drop same old thing, double click it, and Inside Job. Uh, if there's obviously because this Inside Job's in the trash. So definitely, uh, if I see in just because I see two Inside Jobs in the heap. Uh, and no same old things on the table does not mean I'm going to make the bet on no inside job unless I'm desperate. Oh, there is another clone ship there. Runner is a little low on credits right now, and the ice wall has become advanced. So we can't uh, hit R and D here. Yep. The, uh, oof. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't run that turn. So. <laughs> Checking the ability. <laughs> you don't see it too often. You just got to make sure it says, if the runner didn't make a successful run, you may get an advancement so here we go he's getting his cerebral uh his uh subliminal messagings and his advancement on the ice wall and trick a light brain trust okay two two the game is two two it took two jackson howards to get this far but he has arrived you know this tenant deck seems i mean you know the Inazuma Koma Inu hit was huge. But seems to be holding up pretty well against the standard ridiculous... See, there's the same old thing. Against the standard ridiculously powerful criminal deck. It's just kind of slow. We're already, you know, how far into this game? Maybe 15 minutes-ish in, something like that. And, um, you know, it's it's the score is only 2-2. Two -two, right? Holding out. But these elimination rounds are only 30, 35 minutes, something like that. So, whew, you, <laughs> you know, you got to watch out. You know, that's that's the danger of playing a slow deck. All right, Katie's emptied. Big money, finally, for the runner. Nice recovery. He's got a good cycle going on the Katie, right? He he makes runs, spends money, fills up Katie, makes runs, spends money, fills up Katie, and then by the time he's out of money running, uh, he can empty Katie and start over again. Okay, there's the Koma Inu. Ferry that. And spend just one to break... Himitsu Bako with the Corroder, get a Day Sucker, find a card, an HQ, and <laughs> Lucas! <laughs> Same. He's accessed it, I think, three times now. Running HQ is a good move here, though. You, you got to assume that the Corp is waiting. He's got the advancement counters uh, on the ice wall. He's waiting to draw Trick of Light. 
He's probably holding agendas. I mean, you saw... Oh, there it is, the third brain trust. Boom, trick of light. I guess he just top decked that trick of light there. All right, four to two in favor of the runner. Parasite the Koma Inu with the clone ship. That's the only way to deal with that, especially since Fairy's gone. But that was actually possibly a mistake, right? Because if you noticed, uh, there's a mimic in the archives. I think that's his only mimic, and I think those were both of his only clone ships. You know, counting influence, you got to imagine three data sucker, one or two parasites, that's four, or five, six, seven, two clone ships, eight, nine, ten, eleven, corroder, twelve, thirteen, you know, mimic, fourteen, yog, fifteen. So, one mimic, one yog, one corroder, and he's counting on the clone ships to rescue them. But the mimic is gone. So here that swordsman on R and D, he has pretty much no way to deal with it. You can use a fairy on that? No. You're not gonna do that. He's gonna take a net damage to run R and D now. And I guess he can't play any AI breakers if he has one in his deck. If he does have one in his deck, it's a Crypsis. But Crypsis has been out of style for a while. I don't I don't think he has one. Oh, I do see a Parasite in the hand, though. That If he sees another Koma Inu. All right, well, Inazuma gets it done. Turns that Himitsubako, which was basically a, a non-factor, into a serious on the run. Yep, see that mimics in the trash, along with two clone ships. We see another parasite in hand, so I get we've counted the influence. I think the only way through the Inazuma is with a Yag, and it's going to be expensive for him to install it now. It cost him all his money. He could empty Cadian and install it, I guess. Ten in deck, success. Look at this, successfully making Andromeda unable to get the successful run. And every turn that happens, subliminal messaging advancement. That's like a one click, two credits for free. Every turn he can keep this up. And Andromeda has been without Desperado all game. That would have definitely paid for itself by now. Just the three HQ runs where he saw the celebrity gift, not counting all those R&D runs. All right, there we go. There's the Yog. And, but for the Yog to go through the Inazuma, he needs two Data Suckers. So when he does it, yep, two Data Suckers and a credit to break Himitsubako, one Data Sucker comes back. So now he needs to make a successful run somewhere else before he can make another one in HQ. Howard. Goodbye, Howard. That's the third one. So no more recursion is possible here for the corp. Like I said before, the only way he has to get Trick of Light back into the deck is with the uh, the Jackson Howards. So now, the only Tricks of Light he's going to get are the ones that are left in the deck, and I think there's only one left in there, and he absolutely needs it. Um, because I don't think it's possible now for him to make... You know, he can keep the runner out of the centrals. 
I don't think it's possible for him to make a secure remote that the runner couldn't get one successful run on if they wanted to. Maybe this is just a really big code to get Lotus Field, but Lotus was Lotus Field wasn't out then. Oh, if it was, it would have... <laughs> yeah, this deck actually is probably a lot better now with Lotus Field existing. Subliminal messaging. Yeah, we can see agendas there in HQ just being held on to, not being scored. He needs a third trick of light and then I guess a clone retirement. There's no way for him to score an agenda in the remote. I would put, you know, if you think about the big fast advance decks, the HB ones typically bring in Sansan. Sand. They'll have three, two or three Sansan sand and three Botic Labor. The NBN ones, they'll have three Sansan sand and, you know, probably three Botic Labors in New, New Earth Hub these days. This deck has three Tricks of Light, and that's it. The, you know, those other HB and NBN fast advance decks, they also have Jackson Howard for recursing those cards. Uh, this one only has Howard for cursing those cards. I would, you know, I don't know what he spent all the, I mean, he spent some of the influence here on Ice Wall. You have to do that, obviously. Uh, but I don't see what else he's, and Howard. So three Ice Walls, three Howards is six. I would strongly consider Reclamation Order and or Archive Memories. If you want to go pure Trick of Light is the only fast advance card. Archive Memories is basically another trick of light. Uh, and it can sort of, you know, get you out of these situations where you're ahead in the game. You know, you've got the runner locked out just like you wanted. You can trick of light and score, but you don't have trick of light because there's only three copies in the deck. And you've already used one, though. Archive Memories, next turn, trick of light. But I don't think he's running that. See, there's Mr. Lee, Desperado. Mary's going to infiltrate the Archives Ice. Pretty sure that's the Grim that we saw. Even though we couldn't see it right here. I don't even know for 100% sure it's Grim. But when we saw it originally, it looked like Grim. To me, at least. All right, so he still thinks it's worth it to go with Desperado. This late in the game. Does he need the extra MU? He's going for R&D, so he takes the net damage. Uh, okay, the extra MU could have done the Parasite. Um, as a clone retirement, which means bad pub. Bad pub. Mm, but the corp would have loved to see that clone retirement. Yeah, I guess if the Grim got rezzed, he could have then scored the clone retirement afterwards, cleared the bad pub away. Power shut down for zero. Goodbye, fairy. Oof. That's rough. We've seen Koma Inu is the big sentry. Archive runs, I guess, are impossible with Grim there now. We can't even make one. The runner is drawing cards like crazy. All right, so he's going to keep going to R&D where he can get in for a net damage and some credits. Some data suckers and some credits. No, bad pub helps a lot too here. 
since Corroder is uh, a credit powered breaker. Oh, he didn't actually use data suckers to make that run, so he's just getting more. That's probably h really helpful. It means he can make an HQ run. Because he, a he absolutely must have the data suckers to break through the Inazuma. Corp, pretty confident in his ice, just taking money and waiting. I mean, if you have a sentry or a, any code gate of serious strength, it's going to stop him. He could same old thing inside job to avoid the mystery ice on HQ. Uh, use two data suckers for Inazuma and, and get an HQ run that way. All right, he's going to dirty laundry R&D to keep up the credits, cost of net damage. Yeah, so he's spending a lot of clicks drawing here, uh, I guess, so he can make R&D runs. And he's the R&D runs to build up the data suckers for HQ runs. I don't think there's ever going to be a card in a remote here, ever. A second data sucker will actually help a lot because he can make one R&D run and you know and get immediately get two data suckers, which is what's needed uh, to get to HQ. New ice and R&D. Ooh. If that's a sentry, it's not going to be good. I mean, if it's a Koma Inu, then you lose all your cards, you have to jack out, because Swordsman will actually kill you. <laughs> and a new ice on archives, uh, so perhaps you don't have to res the Grim. Oh, an emergency shutdown, though. The problem here is there's nothing worth shutting down right now. So it's like step one, you have to get the corp to res something nasty, which probably means you have to get hit by it. Assuming it's Komainu, right? So you run it, you lose all your cards, you lose the shutdown, <laughs> uh, getting them to res it. And people don't really play forge activation orders much anymore. I mean, you could same old thing inside job HQ and play the shutdown, no problem. But what are you going to shut down? There's nothing on the table that's particularly valuable. Yeah, it looks like the corpus is waiting to draw a trick of light. There must be one left in the deck. Super defense on HQ. I think everyone knows he's holding the agendas and waiting at this point. It's not a mystery to either player, so you're not giving anything away by defending HQ. The account siphons have already been thrown away here. <laughs> he needs accesses to score. Uh, doing something about money isn't going to make a difference. Okay, infiltrate the ice on R&D. And drawing tons of cards, throwing out Plascretes and Account Siphons, which are no longer needed in this game. Did see a legwork, though, in the hand of the runner. Depending on the two HQ ice, that may or may not work. Um, you know, if, But if he can get in with that legwork somehow, oh boy. He takes three cards in that hand. He can only see Lucas once at most. Score three to four in the corpse favor. I mean, it's it's pretty much a two agenda game for either player. We're almost at time in the round too.
Runner just drawing every card he's got left in his deck. I don't, I don't know what he's looking for. Look how long this Tenon deck has been able to keep out Andromeda from all the centrals. Unreal. It's mostly because that Mimic's in the trash and there's only one. That's the main reason. But even if he had the Mimic on the table, the Inazuma is really going to slow him down. Uh, you know, if there is Koma Inu, he's going to spend one credit for every card in his hand. Ah, oh, there we go. He was looking for the, the final fairy there. He's got one shot with that fairy. If only you could use a legwork and an inside job at the same time, which you can't. Uh, he could legwork inside job HQ, and he knows there's only possibility of one sentry in the way. Oh, that looks like a clone retirement, so the bad pub is gone. It's a, he's a trick of light away from victory. Same old thing. Inside job, R&D. Because uh, the data suckers got cleared at, at a few turns ago. So he needs to get the two data sucker counters uh, from the R&D run, the only place he can run safely, in order to even make the HQ run possible. And now that the clone retirement's been scored, it's the, you know the heat is on and the clock is running out as well. Spend a lot to break the highly advanced ice wall. Can't really tell what that card is. Right. I'm not a big fan of this, keeping both uh, data sucker virus counters combined. Theoretically, what if one of them gets trashed? And right, so you want to count them separately. Anyway, um, here comes the legwork. Oh, empty Katie, then legwork. So it was... Same old thing, inside job R&D. That's two clicks. Empty Katie. Final click, legwork. Well, it, it, it all depends on these ice here. What are the ice? And will he res them? Ice wall. That's not doing anything. Hmm. Komenu. Yep. Fairy. The inside job to Komenu and R&D. Ferried the one on HQ. Two data suckers. And a credit gets him in. This is a legwork. This feels like it could be a winner. Rolling dice. Grabbing cards. It's pretty much the last chance. Time ran out. Two points. Nothing. Boom. There it is, Lucas in four points. Woo. That was that was some good net runner right there. Good net runners.